Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's use the technique that we learned in the previous video and apply it to trying to add these two fractions. They don't have the same denominator. Multiplying the two fractions to get a common denominator would give us a really big denominator. We're going to try to find the lowest common denominator by using the method we learned in the previous video. We're going to take the number 84 and begin by dividing it by its smallest prime factor. So in this case it will be number 2. So when we divide this number by 2, 2 goes into 84 42 times. It's still even, so we can continue with the number 2. 2 goes into 42 21 times. Now we have an odd number. That odd number is divisible by 3, the next prime number. So divide by 3 and we have a remnant of 7. So we can say that 84 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. We're going to do the same for the number 126. 126, we can see that we can divide it by 2 because it's even. Divide 126 by 2, we get the number 63, which is no longer even. So we're going to div div divide that number by the number 3. Because we add the two digits together, we get 9. So 63 is divisible by 3. 3 goes into 63 21 times, which is still divisible by 3. So divide by 3, we get a remainder of 7, which means that 126 can be written as 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. Now we look for each of the factors and see how many times it appears in each of the two numbers. We see the factor 2 appears once here and appears twice there, so we need these two. We look at the factor 3, which appears three times here and only once there, so we take these two. And then the factor 7 appears once here, once there, so we only need to account for it once. Which means that the lowest common denominator is going to be equal to the product of all the factors we circled. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. So that would be equal to 4 times 9 times 7. 4 times 9, which is 36 times 7. 7 times 30 is 210, 7 times 6 is 42, so that would be a common denominator of 252. All right, so that will now become the new common denominator, 252, 252. And now we ask ourselves the questions, how many times do we have to multiply 84 to get 252? And that looks like three times, and let me use a different color. So we have to multiply the denominator, by 3, 84 times 3 is 252, which means we also must multiply the numerator by the same number. Here we can see that if we multiply the denominator by 2, we get 252. We can do the same to the, or we must do the same to the numerator, which means that the new two numerators will become 1 times 3 and 5 times 2. And so when we add those together, we can see that this is equal to 3 plus 10 over common denominator of 252, and this becomes 13 over 252, which, since 13 is a prime number, and I don't believe 252 can be divided by 13, so that's the re most reduced form of the answer. But again, the technique comes from taking the two large denominators and finding a way to write it as a product of its factors, and that's a pretty good way to do it. That's how it's done.